Local Press 3 nesting is a gold certified add-in for SolidWorks, which means it is thoroughly integrated and you might not even know that it's not part of SolidWorks once you get using it. I have here a part with a number of imported bodies in it. These are just dumb solids. Um, they were created with SolidWorks at one point, but they're exported as a step file and brought back in. When I start the nesting software, it starts with focus in this box here, asking for what I want to nest. And I can hit this button to grab all of the bodies within the part file or all of the parts within the assembly. Otherwise, I can physically go through and click on just the ones that I want to use if I do not want to nest all of them. I have a couple of parameters here. It's asking for space between parts as well as a distance from the material edge, give you some room for work holding and that sort of thing. We can define a sheet size uh, or we can leave it blank and just let it fill into the smallest area possible. Um, so if I want to have this fit on something say 200 millimeters wide, we can enter that and then the next field becomes available and it would try to, we could constrain it to be a rectangle and we could tell it exactly how small we want it. Uh, the other option would be is if we had a non-rectangular part, we could use a sketch um, of the shape and it would fit it within that sketch. We can allow parts to flip over if it doesn't matter which side is up. We can fix the orientation of parts if there is something significant um, such as grain direction or like a print on top or something like that that we don't want them to rotate at all. And we also have the option to tell it not or tell it whether or not we want things to be nested within the holes of parts. This uh, bottom section down here allows us to control parameters for individual parts. So if I take this cross shape here, I can tell it that I want to make five of these instead of just one, so I don't have to import a bunch of redundant bodies. I could also fix the orientation or the flip of specific parts within a sheet if some matter and some don't. We can align them to edges and stuff like that. And now when I hit compute, we're going to see this little chart of how much material loss it has. Uh, it's created a rectangle that is 200 millimeters wide and it is now trying to create the shortest rectangle that all that will fit in because I only provided the width. So you can see that it started with uh, over 60% material loss and it's down to 58, 57 and it's going to keep on going through keeping track of uh, how many iterations it took, how many, how much time it's been since there was a new smaller format. And this is just going to kind of run as a, uh, a almost indefinite permutation calculation. Um, you know, there is never going to be a truly best solve, so you're kind of looking to see where the, when you like the results, you know, when it's nested well enough. You can hit stop and it will make a preview of what you have and I could decide hmm, I want to I want to change some of these parameters we could do that otherwise I hit confirm and it is going to save this out as a separate part see here that it has given us this rectangle that is that 200 millimeter wide that we had entered and then maintaining the distance around parts it ends up being 380 millimeters long. Shows us some data here size of material, surface area, material lost and used, uh, perimeter of parts for the, your cut distance, um, and then some of the basic specs that we had provided for the nesting calculation.